Well, amen. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, band, team, choir. God bless you all. You sounded great. Well, welcome. My name is Danny Forshe. I'm the pastor here at Great Hills Baptist Church, about 10 and a half, almost 11 years now. Ashley and I have served here, and we're delighted that you're here today. Many of you have told me this is your first time back to church since COVID, since about a year. So welcome. Welcome back. It's wonderful. So delighted you're here, and as uh, Trey greeted us a moment ago, so many of you are watching us online. If you are online, I want to encourage you to do this, and you here in the house, if you have your phones and want to open them up to Facebook Live and just push the share button that we did there a few minutes ago, and this will invite so many people uh, to join in with you as people are at home. Maybe Easter Sunday, they're scrolling through Facebook. They will see that their friend, you, have shared this, and so they will participate with us, and that will be uh, fantastic. So again, we welcome you guys that are online, people all over the nation. Uh, we welcome you. Thank you for joining in with us here at Great Hills. We are uh, delighted. My, I've got this new uh, iPhone a watch, you know, Nike. It's buzzing off of my wrist, and this thing is buzzing. So let me just, let me put it over here. So Thank you for being here. God bless you. We're going to have a, a text that you're very familiar with. Many of you are familiar. If there was one verse in the Bible that you had heard before, it's probably this one. Uh, Martin Luther called it the heartbeat uh, of the gospel. The gospel literally in, to use Luther's words, in its miniature. And so that verse is John 3:16. And uh, so we'll put it on the screen here. In fact, guys, go ahead and put it on the screen. This is a message called Peace with God. And we're going to talk about what it means to have peace with God. If there's one thing that the human heart is so desperately longing for, especially in this day and age, I want to say post-COVID or during COVID or during these difficult days, it is peace, that sense that, you know, my heart is at rest. I am at peace with God. I'm at peace with my fellow man. And John 3, 16 uh, shares with us just exactly how we experience this peace with God. As I read, as you read the text with me, I want you to notice, in fact, I want to look at verse 17 as well. And I heard the following description of John 3, 16. And when I give you this description, what I want you to do is I want you to just read the verse on the screen to yourself, not, not out loud, but you'll, you'll hear me. For example, I'll say, God is the greatest lover. And you'll see the word God up there. Then I'll say the word so loved, and I'll continue on. I'll describe the whole verse this way. And I came across this, and I thought this was a fantastic brief commentary on a passage of Scripture that you and I are very familiar with. But for some of you today, it's going to, it's going to be like you've never read it before. So God is the greatest lover. Loved is the greatest degree. The world is the greatest number that he gave is the greatest act. His only begotten son is the greatest gift that whosoever is the greatest invitation. The believeth or believes or has faith is the greatest simplicity. In him is the greatest person. Should not perish is the... Is great news. It's called the great deliverance, but is the greatest difference. Have is the greatest certainty, and everlasting life is the greatest possession. I'm currently reading a book uh, by a man by the name of Adam Grant, and the title of the book is called Think Again, and the subtitle reads The Power of Knowing What You Don't Know. And I've been fascinated with this book. I'm well into it by now. I was reading a couple of chapters again yesterday. Adam Grant has been voted for seven years in a row the top professor at the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. It's one of the top business schools right up there with uh, Stanford and Harvard and so forth. And he is an organizational psychologist. He studies organizations and he studies the people who work in those organizations and how they can maximize their effectiveness. Now, he's an agnostic. An agnostic is someone who says, and I heard Adam say this in his own words as he was being interviewed on the Kerry Newhoff podcast show. He said, I'm an agnostic. However, I know somehow there's got to be somebody behind all of this. And that was Adam's, uh, his own confession. 
And in the book, the basic premise is rethink everything. Now, he says you have your core values. You're pretty settled on those, but rethink it. And the the chapter on the politician, the preacher, the prosecutor, and the scientist, I'm telling you, that's worth the price of the book. It's a fascinating read, and it challenges you to rethink. So here's what I want to do. I want to do this. I want to borrow a page out of Adam's book and ask those of us who are Christians, who are followers of Jesus Christ, to rethink this passage of Scripture. And maybe there is some power behind what you don't know. And those of you today that maybe this is the first time in a long time that you've been to church or the first time in a long time you've you've read the Bible, I want you to rethink your presuppositions. And that just maybe, maybe there is a message latent, inherit in John 3.16 that maybe you've never seen before. And I pray that you would open up your heart and open your mind. In fact, let me pray for you that we would do that right now, that we would just uh, take a deep breath, Get our phones when they ring, all right? (laughs) Take a deep breath. Say, God, thank you that we're here today. What a privilege, what a blessing. Thank you, God, that all truth is your truth. We can learn from atheists and agnostics. They're not our enemies, they're our friends. And we pray that today, God, they would learn from us today, that we serve a mighty God, a God that loves us, a God that's not against us, but very, very much for us to save, to deliver, to bless, to give peace and joy and hope. So we just pray now, God, that John 3.16 would come alive. It would be as if we've never heard it before, never seen it before, and that, Lord, you'd speak to us each and every one. I'm really praying today, God. I know so many people are fearful today. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of angst and anxiety, and I know that many of the folks watch it online, Lord, they're still kind of, they're kind of grappling with that and shot or no shot, vaccination or no vaccination, or there's just a lot of turmoil. There's just a lot of inward angst. We're just praying, God. We're praying today that the peace of God would reign and that each one of us, Lord, would rethink this passage of Scripture, re-engage with it, and we would be invigorated by it, God. So we ask you to speak to us, and this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Uh, Amen. Let me go ahead and read verse 17 of John 3. For God This is the verse that follows verse 16. You know, there are some verses I feel sorry for in the Bible. Who knows John 3, 17? Look at this one. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn you, to condemn the cosmos. No, but he sent his son into this world that through him the world might be saved. Now, John chapter 3, let me give you the context of the text. This will help you rethink this passage of Scripture. It's a true story. It's a dialogue, not a monologue, between Jesus and a man by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a very erudite, scholarly, brilliant member of the Sanhedrin. He's a Pharisee. He is a teacher in all of Israel. Jesus is a peasant rabbi to him. And yet Jesus Christ sits next to him at night, and he begins to talk to him about the new birth, how a mere mortal human being, a woman, a man could enter into a relationship with God personally. And Jesus said, Nicodemus, you have to be born a second time. And Nicodemus asked the question, how in the world does this happen? And that's a question people are asking today. How can I be born again? How can that which is dead in me come to life? How can I know that there really is a God that loves me, that cares for me? How can I know these things for certain? And Jesus said, for God so loved the world. That's the context of the text, that he gave his only son, me, Jesus is speaking, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what I want to do this morning for the next few minutes is I just want to exegete. That's a big fancy word that means just dive into and let John 3, 16, just speak to us, speak to your heart and speak to my heart. Now, again, I think uh, Adam Grant, rethink. And just say, well, I'm open. The very fact that I'm here today, Pastor Danny, it means that I am open. Somebody invited me. Somebody shared with me just a moment ago, and I love his testimony. He said, you know, I have not been in church in a long time, and this feels really good. That's what he told me. He said, I I need a home. I, I need a place. And so we welcome you. So glad that you're here. Let's begin with God. God so loved. Assuming God exists, 
Assuming that he is real, that he created this fabulous world in which we live and we inhabit, love spills. Love spills out of heaven into us. Think about the fact that we're here today, that we're created, that we're sustained, that we're alive. There's oxygen in our lungs. There was a sunrise today. There are newborn babies' eyes that we look into. Oh, my word. Think about this world that God has created and God so, not hate, right? And God so judged and God was so angry. And that's the caricature. That is the, that is the conception that many people have of God, that he's against them, that somehow, for some reason, he got really, really mad and he's just really ready to zap every one of us and just blast us. No, the Bible says that God so loved this world, this world that he has created. In fact, God's nature is a nature of holiness and love. You cannot separate this, this coexistence, these two dichotomies that absolutely make sense and coexist in the nature of God. He is loving, and we know that. He is, he is pure, he is gracious and kind, and he is holy, right? And he's just, and he's powerful, and he is to be revered and feared because he is the awesome, holy God. But this God so loved the cosmos, and, and that is the Greek word that we translate this English word, world. That's you, friend. That's me. That's everything that we see. If we believe the Bible, that God is really the author, uh, the, the creator, then we attribute it to him. And we say, okay, God, you are the creator of the cosmos and you loved this world, that he gave his only begotten son. Now, now we're getting into the real heart of this, of this text. The Greek word here, there's a lot of Greek words that John could have recorded Jesus saying, but this is the word Jesus chose. We have the word phila, phileo, which is where we get the English, the root word of Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love, right? Eros, erotic, okay, sexual love. We, that's a Greek word. He didn't use that one, Amen. There's another one that he could have used, storge, which is the love between a, maybe a friend or even a father and a son or mother and a daughter. But they didn't use any of those words. They use this word agape. Whenever you see this word in the Greek New Testament, it, you can really basically translate it sacrifice, sacrifice. That God so loved this world that he sacrificed. You see Jesus on the cross, right? You see him bleeding, suffering. Did he do something wrong? No. Did you and I? Yes. And that's where this great mission of God to come down on this earth that he created, enter it in the incarnation, become one of us, Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man. He so loved the world that he came and that he gave his only begotten son. John 15, 13, I love this passage of scripture. It says, greater love hath no man than this, greater agape, Sacrifice has no body than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. About a month ago, Officer Jesse Madsen in Tampa Bay, Florida. He's a father of three, he has a 16 year old, a 12 year old and a 10 year old. And this police officer on I-275, I've been on this road many times in Tampa, Florida in major vein, artery, corridor there in Florida. And Jesse Maston sees the unthinkable. He sees a person driving incredibly fast, going the wrong way. And he's speeding. And Jesse sees what is happening. And he thinks in just a, in a brief moment of time, he goes, this person is going to kill many people going the wrong way. So this is what he does. And you read about it. You probably saw it. He takes his police patrol officer car and he puts it right in front of the speeding man and both of the men are killed immediately. And the police chief uh, there in Tampa, Brian Dugan says these words, when you look at someone who's earned seven life-saving awards, there's no surprise that he would take such swift action and do this. And that's agape. You say, where does that come from? <laughs> How does macroevolution produce agape love? Or the sense of oughtness and ethics and right and wrong? How does, how does that 
happen here on the cosmos, on the planet Earth, I'm telling you, God is the originator, the creator of such love. And that he so loved the world, the cosmos, that he gave his only son. Look, friends, I don't, I'm sorry if you swallowed a, a negative pill of religion. It's not negative at all. Jesus is good. Jesus is life. He is joy. He is awesome. Whosoever believes in him. I love that word, whosoever. And y'all that heard me preach a lot, you know, I love history. I love linguistics. I love the Bible. I love the, the original languages. But I want to give you something really cool. You'll take this home with you. You'll appreciate this. The Greek word, you know what the Greek word whoever means? Whoever. That's profound, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's not complicated. It's, it's you. It's me. God's blessed Ashley and I with two grandbabies, and I pray that he'll bless us with a lot more. We any grandparents in the house? I'm just, I'm just curious. My word, aren't they fun? I don't, I don't think I've ever told the family this. Yeah, it's okay. Y'all can hear it, family. Hannah and Jeffrey, y'all can hear this for the first time. And Ashley. When I'm alone with my grandkids and I'm holding them, when they let me hold them, sometimes they don't want me holding them. <laughs> this is what I say. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if you, Claire, believe in him, you'll never perish but have everlasting life. And I pray that over my grandchildren. I do the same thing for little Ry Ry, little Riley. And if my other kids get on the bandwagon, <laughs> I'll do it for their kids too, all right? We want a whole bunch of them. That whoever believes, now that is the operative word. To believe is not, well, I, yeah, sure, that's cool, that exists. Mentally, cognitively, theologically, academically, that's not at all what John 3, 16 means. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes, Billy Graham said this word believe means it's much far superior than a mental assent. It is a, it is a commitment of one's life. It, it's, it means that you believe so much, it makes that 18 inch journey from your head to your heart and it changes who you are. You believe in Jesus to the point where you say, wow, thank you that you died on the cross for my sins. You arose from the dead. I trust in you to be my, my Savior. My favorite verse in the Bible is Romans 10, 9, and it says these words, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe, pistis is the Greek word. Again, it's much more than just, oh yeah, I believe. I, I believe today's Easter. Yeah, I believe tomorrow will be a good day. Yeah, I believe. No. It's a belief unto commitment that you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. One more verse that has this operative word believe in it. It's Ephesians 1.19. I love this. And what is the exceeding greatness of the power of God to us who believe? You say, but I don't see anywhere in there where it says you, you got to be good. You got to go to church, you got to do certain things. You no, it says you have to believe. And when you truly believe, it changes everything. According to the working of God's mighty kratos, God's mighty power. Next, let's go to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. Mm, by the way, I think we, ooh, I've been wanting to say this for a long time. I think we are most like God, the nature of God, when we as human beings give. I believe that. We give of our time. We give of our compliments. We give of our energy. We give, and this is for the membership here at Great Hills Baptist Church. God bless you. I love you. I appreciate you. You give of your tithes and your offerings, and it makes everything happen. 
It's how we can exist as a church because we have to turn the lights on. We have to operate and those kind of things. And I thank you. And I want to say this again. We are no, we're never more like God than when we are giving. When it's just like it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that whoever, that's you and me, believes has trust. Simple childlike faith in him, watch this, shall never perish. Can we talk about that for just a moment? You said, well, you, is there a possibility that I might perish? I mean, are you going to go there on Easter Sunday and offend me by telling me that there is really a hell? There is a hell. Jesus taught more about, hev- about hell and money <laughs> than anything else in the Bible. Isn't that interesting? Hell, 70 times, 70 times. The other biblical writers, 162 times. Why in the world would anybody want to interject something so negative and so discouraging and so depressing as a place called hell? I mean, who in the world would do that unless it's true? Now, if it's true, oh, wait a minute. Then this rescue mission of love and redemption and compassion, then then it really does make sense. I'm still challenged by the atheist Penn Gillette. You say, well, pastor, what are you doing reading all these agnostics and atheists? I'm telling you, I learn from these people. These people are not my enemies. In fact, I enjoy talking to them. I enjoy engaging with them. And we have some lively conversations. And do you know that you can have convictional compassion? Did you know that? You can have convictions and believe what you believe, and yet you can do it with compassion. Penn Jillette is the atheist that I'm referring to, and he is the part of the Penn, uh, Penn, uh, what's his other name? Penn Jillette. And the magician duo, I don't know if y'all have seen them on TV. Teller, right, that's it. Penn Jillette and Teller. This guy's, he's large and in charge. I mean, he goes on online, on YouTube, and does a whole YouTube thing and talks about this person witnessing to him. After one of his shows in Las Vegas, Nevada, and our people here at Great Hills, you've heard me share this story with you a couple of times. And Penn Jillette walks away from that and he goes, I want to I make a statement about this. This guy comes up to me, gives me his Bible, and tells me it was a great show and that God loves me. And he gives me, an atheist, this Bible. And he said these words, and I have incredible respect for that. And then he goes on and starts preaching. He says, you Christians, you believe that there is a hell and I'm I'm going there and you don't have the guts or the love to tell me? He said, I don't respect that at all. (laughs) For God so loved you that he gave his son Jesus that if you'll believe in him, you will not spend an eternity in hell separated from him, but you will spend an eternity in heaven with him. You say, well, what's the problem here? The problem is sin. For the Bible says all of us have sinned and we've broken the heart of God. We have disappointed God who's created us in pristine holiness and purity and joy. And yet we do things, we say things, and we think things that we should not. And it separates us from God. And so God goes on this great rescue mission. He leaves the glory of heaven and he comes to earth and he dies on a cross so that you and I can be restored to him. I'll tell you something, friend, that is the greatest news on the planet, that God loved us so much that he gave us his son so that we should not perish but have uh, everlasting, everlasting life. I was listening to a sermon this morning at Long Hollow Baptist Church, a uh, pastor there, uh, Robbie Gallaty. He's about my height. He's 6'5". He's 225 pounds, and he's a former MMA fighter. Dude. Gave his life to Christ 18 years ago. Uh, they've baptized like 700 people in the last few weeks at Long Hollow Baptist Church. And I was watching their service today. His whole sermon... Almost the entire sermon was on hell. And he was scaring the Hades out of people. I mean, it was, he was like, I mean, it was serious. And I was like, is he really doing this? And he's like, look, people, if this this is real, 
that there's some way, and that's what Penn Jillette said. He said, you, there's some way that I might be going there? He goes, look, and this is Penn Jillette speaking. He said, this is where I tackle you. There's a truck running toward you. You don't see it. And he said, this is where I tackle you and, and help you and rescue you. And then I saw it with my own eyes this morning on my little iPhone today, just scores and scores of people coming forward, giving their heart to Christ and getting baptized. Look, it's the gospel. It's the truth. It is the beautiful love story that we may have everlasting life. Let me, let me share a little bit about this word life here. There are two Greek words translated life, bios and zoe. And bios is organic living organisms life. It's by what? Biology, which is the study of life, living organisms. That's not the Greek word. You say, well, why don't you share all that with us? If that was well, just because I wanted to. All right, that, that's bios, okay? Zoe there are some Zoe's. I'm, I've literally met people named Zoe, one of them in our church. Zoe is a different, is a whole different deal. One definition puts it this way. Zoe means real life and genuine, a life that is active and vigorous, a life that is blessed. It's life lived at its deepest level and meaning. It's everlasting life that Jesus comes to give us. For God did not send his son into this broken world. Look, friend, if you don't think this world is broken, you're in deep denial. If you don't think there's sickness and calamity and hurt and pain and racism and murder and evil, if you don't think that stuff exists, then you, you've been living in an alternate universe. Look, all those things are real. Now watch this. Just as that is real, God is real. There has to be. Where do you think we get this cosmic, epic battle of the ages? Where does that come from? That comes from reality, the supernatural that we cannot see. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. We do that. If you walk away from this message today, look, some of you will be offended. You'll walk away and you'll be angry. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm simply telling you the truth, okay? If this is true, how dare I not share this, right? What a, what a hypocrite. But if it's true and I warn you, then forever in eternity in hell, you will blame yourself. No, I'm serious. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can believe. You can ask God for forgiveness. In, in a few weeks, we're going to have a guest speaker come, speaking of science and atheists and agnostics, and he's going to speak in our church. For 45 minutes, I'm giving him the platform. <clears throat> you say, have you lost your ever-loving mind? His name is Ming Wang. <laughs> Dr. Ming Wang. He is arguably the greatest surgeon, eye surgeon in the world. He doesn't leave Nashville, Tennessee very often. And so he's going to come on screen. I'm going to interview him May the 2nd. There he is. And he's going to share his story. Okay. Medical degree from Harvard University <clears throat> got his PhD from MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in laser physics. And what he does is he operates on the eye where nobody else dares to go. In fact, eye surgeons go to him to have their eye surgery, okay? And he's gonna speak for 45 minutes on the relationship, watch this, between faith and science. And you ought to come back and hear this. This is fascinating especially if you, some of you geeky people like me that like this kind of stuff, right? You like the cerebral, you like to be challenged, you like to think again, right? Can I give you just a hint of what's gonna go down that day? Sure, go ahead, tell us a little bit. <clears throat> okay, I will. While he was at Harvard, you mean like Harvard and Massachusetts? Yeah, Harvard. Before that, he was in China and he was part of the Cultural Revolution for three years, 
He missed his 10th, 11th, and 12th grade of study because of the Cultural Revolution. Anybody who was educated was, um, was banished to work in hard labor. Somehow his mom and dad, both medical doctors, escaped that. And so it came time for Ming Wang to take an exam to college entrance. And he's missed the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th grades. And there's going to be all kinds of physics and chemistry, mathematics and history. And so his mom and dad, <clears throat> 20 hours a day, he would study. For a couple of months, two or three months, he aced the exam, got a scholarship to University of Maryland, <clears throat> came over to America, got accepted to Harvard. And when he was having lunch with a Harvard professor, this is what happened. One, could you throw me that water? It's... <clears throat> I trust your arm. Just toss it, see if I can catch it. Amen. Thank you. I don't trust my arm, but I'll throw it. <clears throat> Good job. <clears throat> hey, Ming, do you see that car over there? Ming Wang, Wang he's talking to his Harvard professor, says, Yes, sir. Professor, I see the car. Having lunch at a restaurant. He said, let me ask you a question, Ming. Do you believe that car just appeared out of nowhere? And Ming started laughing. Ha, of course not. There's an engineer. There's a scientist. There's workers. They crafted that and they created that car, sir, doctor, professor. And then the professor had the audacity to ask this young medical student, And tell me about your mind. <laughs> Did it appear? And Ming Wang said, nobody had ever challenged me. And he said, I began to think and I began to study. Well, just come May the 2nd and you'll hear the rest of the story of what, what happened, what happened to him. So glad you're here today. I, I really am. Now, it's 10.50 and I'm finished, and our people are like freaking out right now. They're like, what is happening here? This guy never finishes before 12 o'clock. But what's about to happen is something really, really cool. We, we have one more song, and Lori's going to sing it. It's about the blood of Jesus. And it is going to bless you to no end. But it would be really remiss of me if I did not offer you an invitation and here's what we're going to do at Great Hills Baptist Church. I'm going to offer you those of you who have rethought John 3.16. I just want you to raise your hand if you felt like you learned maybe something you didn't know before John 3.16 today. Would you raise your hand if you learned anything new? God bless y'all. The rest of you are Greek scholars. Oh, that's amazing. I, I didn't know y'all knew all that. That's, I'm in prayer. For God so loved you that he gave his son for you that if you will believe, I'm going to call on you today to believe. On Easter Sunday morning, yesterday was four, three, two, one. April the 3rd, 21. And here we are at Easter is zero. Four, Three, two, one, believe. You say, well, I'm interested. What do I need to do? It's simple, and yet it's the most profound thing I could ever tell another human being. And by the way, I don't do this just for audiences. I do this with people on the airplane. I do this wherever I am. You can ask my family. I'm not obnoxious about it, but I really believe heaven's for real and heaven and hell is too. So I just tell everybody. I just try to warn everybody. Look, if I'm wrong, and this is all a, an illusion, and some of you are going, now you're talking, brother, now you're talking. Well, watch this. Then I have lived a really cool life. I hadn't killed anybody, you know. I've fed a lot of hungry people, and I've helped a lot of hurting souls, gave a lot of good counsel. And let's say we die, and that's it. Well, Blaise Pascal would say, no harm, no foul. But if I'm right, ooh, if Jesus is really right, then eternity is at stake. 
So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. You may not have prayed in a long time, and I'm just going to invite you into a prayer that I'm going to pray. For those of you that are here, we honor you. We're delighted. We're thrilled. We don't want to insult you or berate you. The Bible says Jesus came not to condemn. He came to save. And those he saves are those that just believe. Look, you you can't earn it. This is the major difference between all major world religions and Christianity. All major world religions work. And they try their best to attain God's righteousness and God's favor, but it's unattainable in our own good deeds. So we need help, right? The only person that really cannot pray to receive Christ right now is is the person of pride. I'm going to invite you to humble yourself before the Lord today. And I'm going to invite you to pray a prayer with me, a prayer of salvation, a prayer of receiving Jesus into your heart. What have you got to lose? (laughs) Right? What have you got to gain? You've tried so many philosophies and iterations of ideologies and You've dabbled into this supernatural. You've dabbled into that. Why don't you give Christ, Jesus, a chance? Give him an opportunity. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to just play David a song as we prepare for the invitation. And I want to um, just invite you to pray a prayer that goes something like this. Say, dear God, wasn't expecting this. haven't talked to you in a long time. But today, I believe. I know I need help. I know that I'm a sinner. No preacher needs to tell me that. But it is true that I've broken your heart and I've disappointed a lot of people, disappointed myself. And Jesus, I'm more than giving you a try today. I'm I'm just giving you my life. And I'm asking you to do what you said you would do to anybody that believes. I'm asking you to give me eternal life. In your name, I pray and believe this. Amen. Amen. I just want to say welcome to the family of God. I believe there are many, many of you in this room who prayed that with me, more so on the internet, as many people have prayed with me. So what I want to invite you to do, and this is for all of us, by the way, whether you prayed this prayer or not, y'all just indulge me because I think this is the coolest thing since sliced bread, but I want you to get your phones out. And we're going to do a QR code that's coming up on the screen. And is that not cool? Come on now. You know, all the restaurants did this during COVID. If you ate out during COVID, you know what's going down here, right? So go ahead and get your phone. And what I'd like for you to do is go to your camera. Go to your camera. Now, if you're in the back, what you'll need to do is you'll need to zoom in with the thumb and the index finger. Does that make sense? Do you know what I'm saying? All right, zoom in. At the top, it'll say open forms in Safari and just touch it. And Shazam. Is that not amazing? There it is. And it says Easter Sunday Connection Card. And I want all of us, you, Great Hills Baptist Church member, you, our beloved guest, let's just fill it out, okay? Put your uh, email address. Mine's already programmed in there. My first name's not. I'm going to put my first name, my last name. Some of you are going, dude, I'm lost. I've lost this thing. Where did, that, where did that go? Okay, just zoom in on it with your phone. Okay, at the top, there'll be a little heading. Touch the top. And shazam, it happens, all right? There's a connection card there. We would love, love for you to do this, all right? Members, really, Great Hills folks, I'm inviting y'all to do this with me as well. Everybody in the house. I wish there was a way, guys, online we could do this. There is a ghbc.org slash connect. We'd love for you to fill out that connection card. Let us get to know you a little bit. Okay. You're a member or a guest. That's cool. I'm a member. 
And then here's your response. I accepted Jesus in the service today. Well, praise God. Just touch that. Say, I did. I believe. I prayed with you, Pastor. I'm not ashamed of that. And man, that changed, that changed me. And I'm grateful. So go ahead and push that button. Some of you, most of you are already followers of Jesus. That's really cool. That's the one I'm going to push. Others of you are like, tell me more. I'm interested in Jesus, your church. And then push submit. That is just so cool. Is that mine? Google Forms. Pretty cool stuff. So is the band here? That I'm just, oh, y'all come. Please come. And Lori, sing the song about the blood of Jesus. And I want you to be incredibly blessed. After the song, we're going to give you just one brief, brief word, and then you'll be dismissed. Please enjoy this. God bless you.